Hello class, my name is Alex, this is Abel, and this is Ravina. How much do you want to invest in your future? And what I mean by this, not investing in bonds, not investing in stocks, 401k is good, but however, we're not talking about that. It does have to deal with money, however. Money and time. How much do you want to invest your money and time into graduate school? Um, as far as I know, unless you're fast-tracking, only one person in this class has gone to graduate school, and that is Professor McCready, who sadly went to Texas A&M. But besides that, um, we all, how many of y'all want to go to graduate school by a show of hands? Okay, perfect. Um, according to the survey, whether you, whether you raised your hand or not, over 50% of y'all surveyed um, that y'all want to go to graduate school. It doesn't have to be tomorrow, it doesn't have to be next semester, it doesn't even have to be next year. I personally want to go in about four or five years from now after I get settled in with the company. Um, expected salaries, over 30% of y'all said y'all wanted to make over $85,000, and actually 10 of y'all said y'all wanted to make over $100,000. With a bachelor's degree, that is possible after about 20, 30 years of maybe working in the field with a bachelor's degree. I have a chart from the Bureau of Labor Statistics that just goes over the average starting salary with a bachelor's, master's, and PhD. So any of y'all looking to make that higher in money, myself included, y'all want to consider graduate school. Finally, the main reason why students can't go, which I'm in that same boat, is because of finances. Yes, finance is a big thing. I personally have made a lot of sacrifices just to get my bachelor's. I can only imagine what I have to go to get my master's right now. However, we're here to talk about that. We're going to talk about the reasons why you should go to graduate school, whether it's master's or PhD, how to pay for it, how to apply for it, how to succeed when you go to graduate school, and then since there are juniors in this class, I will talk about the benefits of fast tracking. I will pass it over to Abel now, who will go over reasons to go to graduate school. Thank you, Alex. So we strongly believe in that growing grass graduate school is important for you in the long run. And we compiled a list of reasons why you should consider going, starting with the greater employment opportunities. So nowadays, the bachelor's degree is lessening as the norm for the standard for going into um, entry-level jobs, such as field and teaching, um, law, social work. And nowadays, these employers are looking for more advanced degrees, such as your master's and beyond that. So we're not saying that going to graduate school guarantees success, but it definitely opens doors, and it, um, oh, as opposed to just getting your bachelor's. And the next one I want to talk about is a greater career advancement. And going to when you finish graduate school, you um, not only do you get the education you need, but you also um, gain extra things like you um, become a better, harder worker, you gain discipline, um, you, you're able to handle challenging environments, also uh, balancing your life in the meantime. So um, this also transitions well to your career as well, and you're able to, um, once you get your job, you'll be able to grow at that easier as well. And this also ties into personal growth. So um, the interesting thing about graduate school is that you become a better learner. And by that, I mean, you know, you all maintain the um, passion you had in whatever you're studying, but you also, the extra education also enables um, intellectual stimulation and um, cognitive development, which is, um, so when you're being challenged with the work you get from school, you're gonna like the challenges in that you get, which helps you grow as a person as well. And uh, the next thing, which is the biggest thing, is the financial reward. So um, as Alex was talking about, graduate degree earners earn more than undergraduate degree earners, and that difference can be around 30%. And um, in fields like biology and life sciences, it can be up to 70%. And um, and if we're talking about like the lifespan of you know how much you earn, the difference can be about $400,000, which is substantial and something definitely to consider. And the last reason, the last reason I want to talk about is a greater recognition and credibility. So whenever employers view your resume and they see that um, you finished graduate school, it's going to stand out, but it's also going to show dedication into your field. And whenever you tell people that you finished graduate school, you know they're going to definitely give you more respect because everyone knows how rigorous school is. And when you spend an extra couple of years into it, you know it's definitely something honorable, and it shows, you know. Well, they'll show you more respect for it. So um, probably the biggest concern people have with graduate school is paying for it. And we've, um, we've made a couple of ways of how to pay for it, starting with scholarships, which is a popular way. And this could be from the graduate program or the school itself. And um, this could be from either also you know, public or private organizations. But the key to scholarships is that you have to um, apply as early as possible. Another way to do this through loans, it's not everyone's favorite way, but um, it's still it's another way, and if you you're eligible for financial aid, that's one option. There's um, working, getting a job, going through um, our work studies an option from the school, or you can find a job on your own. There's also a um, job assistance, so it's like it's like a teaching assistantship. So it's like um, 
like it's kind of like being a TA in a way. So they provide uh, tuition, or they provide money that goes directly to tuition, and uh, it also it can also provide stipends as well. Um, there's research grants where um, if you're into research, um, there's research grants that go directly to researchers to help help carry out a research project. So that's one way. And the last reason, which is an interesting way, is that your job can pay for your school. So there was a survey that was conducted and um, for over 550 different employers, and 58% of them said that they help their students um, cover financial aid to some extent. So this has to be through, um, well, the employees have to have some courses that are related to um, uh, their job. So if you're in like IT, you'd be taking computer science courses, or if you're you know, in accounting, you'd be taking some tax courses. So if you can convince your boss that um, you have, your, whatever you're taking could add value to your job, it's definitely um, possible that you know, your boss can help pay for it. So now I'm going to pass it over to Rubina to talk about how to actually apply for graduate school. Okay, so how to apply for grad school. Um, a couple of you wanted to know how. So make sure you check your requirements for the programs. Many programs require, some of them require that you have a job beforehand, so you have work experience, so you know what you're getting into after. Some of them have minimum GPAs, um, certain test scores, so just make sure you know the certain requirements. If it helps, make a spreadsheet. What I did when I was applying for my undergrad degree is I pulled up Excel and I pulled up a list of every single school that I wanted to apply to. That list started off with over 50 and it dwindled down to like 14 by the end. But what I did was I listed out um, their minimum ACT scores, their minimum, minimum SAT scores, how much is required to pay for them, whether it be tuition, then room and board, then books, uh, things like that. And then I said whether it was public or private, scholarships, how much, how much financial aid they'll offer, just so I could get a good overview of the school and what I can do for it. Um, then you also need to check what is needed to complete the application. Well, you need rec letters, transcripts, um, test scores. So make sure you take your tests early. GRE, GMAT, MCAT, LSAT, they're the four most popular ones. So just make sure you take them early and know your codes when you go take the test because when you do take the test, you usually get four to five free schools to send them to. Otherwise, if you choose after, where they're anywhere from $28 to like 50 to send them to each individual school. So if you can take the free money while you can, it's a good thing. Uh, what do you need to send besides the application? Um, rec letters, transcripts, um, anything that shows that you had a job perhaps. Um, some grad schools will like that. And then what do you need to do after you submit the application? Some schools require personal interviews, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you know if your school will require that. So check on the websites. Um, so just make sure you check the website, basically. Um, and then another one we want to talk about is how to succeed in grad school. So know your limits. Um, don't try and take 18 hours every semester, especially in grad school, that's not gonna work. Most schools say about nine because the amount you'll need to study is probably double what it is for undergrad. Set specific study times. Over 50% of you said that you only study about two hours a day that's not gonna fly in grad school, so you're gonna wanna study at least four to six hours. So make sure you set specific times that are only for studying specific classes. Um, get involved on campus, get involved in organizations, um, be a leader. That was one of the mistakes that I made in my, and right now is I'm not involved enough on campus. Um, but also employers like having a life outside of school, just so that you can show that you're well balanced. They don't want you to be all school, 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 school and then have a part-time job because that will also help along with financials and showing that you have experience in the workforce. And now to Alex. Okay, how many people in here are juniors right now? Okay, so a good bunch right now. I didn't know you were a junior, Patrick. Um, so right now, I'm gonna talk about fast tracking at least through the UT Dallas system. Uh, fast tracking through UT Dallas, of course, the minimum requirements are you have to at least have 90 hours, 90 credit hours finished, and then have a 3.4 minimum GPA. Um, there was a question is can you fast track to a different master's degree and to answer that is as long as the requirements for that master's degree are the same as whatever bachelor you're getting whether you're getting a bs in finance bs in accounting then yes however if an undergraduate class is different than that graduate class you would not be able to do that um, if you do decide to fast track um, everybody can take nine hours credit hours a semester except for accounting they limit them to six hours 
you do have to get a fee though. And that B is required, it's not necessarily a downer. What it, they're saying is you're now a graduate student, you have to get a B. Because in grad school, at least at UT Dallas, a B is passing. A B minus is failing, you have to retake the class all over again. No GMAT requirement because you're automatically enrolled for one year. And what that means is when you're enrolled for one year, is once you graduate with your undergrad degree, you can go work for eight, nine months if you like, and then just come back to school and you're automatically enrolled. Don't have to, like I said, take any tests, don't have to spend any extra money. If you decide to fast track and do undergrad, uh, graduate classes in the undergraduate level, I wish I would have done that. However, I decided not to, and now I'm realizing you know, I should have at least taken three classes, got them out of the way, because you also pay undergraduate tuition, which saves you about $2,100 a semester, which who has $2,100 laying around? Um, I know I don't, but that would save me a lot. Now I'm going to pass it back to Ravina to answer some other questions that we have from the class regarding our survey. So in the survey, we put a spot for you guys to ask us any questions that you wanted to know. So you asked, what is considered a good business school? Well, for the four most popular majors, um, these, are the, these are the programs for accounting. It's UT Austin. For marketing, it is Northwestern's Kellogg School of Management. For just a general MBA, because a lot of people have just said they were going to get an MBA, it's obviously Harvard. And then for ITSS, it's going to be uh, MIT. So will a master's degree help me find a job? Um, they should, master's will help you get more opportunities for jobs, and schools also have career centers. So having just a master's will, but if you put in a little extra work while doing your master's, you will hopefully get a job afterwards. Um, do you need work experience to be admitted? Not all programs need work experience. Some do. The majority realize that their undergrads are coming straight. That students are coming straight from their undergrad. So at most, they'll have like maybe one or two summer internships. But a lot of schools also count this as work experience. Um, and then, is it worth my time and effort to get a master's degree? Well, that's what this presentation <coughs> is about. So we hope you do think it is worth your time and effort and other people. So to sum up all our points, we strongly believe in graduate school. And um, there's many ways to pay for it, from scholarships to you know, working to, if you can, get your boss to pay for it, that would be pretty cool. Um, and applying is simple, and it's also, it's, it's done online. It's also, you know, kind of familiar to the way you did it back in undergrad. Um, there is, and success is definitely, you know, attainable, as long as, you know, you definitely um, know your limits, you manage your time effectively, and, you know, most, most importantly, don't procrastinate and all that. And um, for, as long as for juniors, you guys should definitely start considering it now. And um, if you're eligible for fast track, definitely go that route if you want to, you know, attend UT again. And um, yeah, so with all that being said, we um, we strongly believe that the pros outweigh the cons for graduate school. You should definitely consider it. And um, yeah, if you want to invest in your future, it's a good decision. And that about wraps up our PowerPoint. Are there any questions?